Hey, Tom. How are you? Ah, good. <laughs> it might be just it might be just us tonight. Yeah, so. it seems so. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. It's been, it's been crazy this week. It's been crazy. Stupidly crazy. Like, <laughs> like, and, and it's probably going to get even stupider. You know, that's what's yeah, like. You know, I don't. Uh, I, I don't plan to try to figure out how silly it's going to get because you can't make this up you know what i mean like you can't really it's so insane no. um you know so everyone's meeting to tell the the world that uh climate change is the reason for the economic crash and of course. <laughs> you know and, and they're the re- and they're the reason why like everything's so busy at my work yeah and why i don't have like 50 billion ch- changes of clothes mm-hmm. and <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah you know and now nowhere in this writing do, do we want to talk about the sun at all that actually affects the weather and <laughs> and the cycles therein and how it correlates to the earth's temperature over i don't know it's however many years you want because they can do that uh and see the pattern and just then look up and see the tic-tac-toe pattern in the sky and put them together like wait a minute could that be affecting the weather at all? And yeah. uh oh, you there? Uh, oh, there you are. Looking up from their phone. Oh, yeah. it says my internet connection is unstable. What a surprise! Yeah, you dropped. You dropped for a minute. I didn't hear you. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> No, I was just laughing because I was saying like, no, that that would mean people would have to not look at their phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'll get on their phone. That's really the people they want too. So, uh, you yeah. know, and there's far too many of them. I mean, I look around, you know, when I'm at whenever the kids' games or wherever we're at, you know, and most of the room has got their phone in their hands, you know, and they're doing something with it instead of paying attention to what's actually going on, you know. Um, I mean, I don't let my kids do that. But, and if they start to do it, I'm like, yo, <laughs> I try to remind them. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's I'm talking adults, really, too. You know, uh, everyone's into this square box that if it goes away, their whole it's life. Goes incredible. Away. It is, you know, and 5G is not only coming, it's here. And I don't see everybody throwing their phones away. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and Sarah has said that it's in it's actually go, coming through the cables. Like she mentioned that um, L I D A R the lidar, mm-hmm. um, and like and the, how they're also talking about six G and like ten G. So it's it's like it's not just outside in like the, the cell towers. It's like coming through the cables as mm-hmm. well. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> awful. It really, really is, and. You know, you can see how they're just going to pull all this together with propaganda and those who go along with it go along and those who don't just become, you know, the the, uh, the name that pops up as a problem for whatever, you know, uh, we'll even say, because, you know, it is quite possible that uh, the police uh, more decide not to. There was a lot of police at that rally in Virginia. They made the side to support Second Amendment. But when you bring in U.N. police, like, of course, David Icke has been saying forever, and you see that they're actually calling for that now and they're looking to hire U.N. disarmament police, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yes. So, you know, really the people that are going to be coming, you know, they're not, you know, going to care at all about constitutional rights or, or you know, it's it's going to get you know to a point where uh, you know whatever Virginia was really about um, was mm-hmm. to see who was going to show up and how it was going to be and and you know again if you watched any of the feeds while they were on they were everybody was armed outside and everybody was peaceful and it was just you know a I, 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 crazy extreme lefties total nightmare was a whole bunch of armed people getting along and being friendly you know <laughs> and that's pretty much what it was you know um that's good yeah yeah you know so. i wasn't sure you know like how controlled or not it would be yeah so that's why i was kind of leery about you know <laughs> yeah i was very skeptical and expecting something to go down to blame you know mm-hmm. um but for whatever reason it didn't and you know could that be because there was so 
many armed people around, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't really get away with that shit when <laughs> people are walking around armed, you know, because the perpetrator won't get away. <laughs> it's just it's not going to happen. So, you know, um, it, it was it's it. Again, like you, Lisa, I don't trust any of it. Um, I believe it's everything's a setup. But, you know, in reality, from whatever does go on in the external and our response to it, you know, if we do nothing, it's just going to continue. So. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad I'm glad is. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad that they did that, you know, the way they did. I, I'm very glad. Yeah. Because, yeah, like in like, for example, like all the people like going to like the 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 5g protests like on the 25th you know mm-hmm. like yeah. I, yeah you know i'm glad that there will be people there you know just down you know just saying hey this is very unhealthy yeah there's no safety tests it's <laughs> etc 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 so I yeah mean, the list I goes like on that. yes absolutely you know because and that's what i'm hoping is that more people do get it than we think get it because we only see the bad side and the, the idiots that get on <laughs> and, you know mm-hmm. keyboard commandos and all the stupid news and um, you know, that more people, because I'll tell you what, there was uh, loads of people. It wasn't just a little bit of people that showed up in Virginia. There, there, there was just thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands. Absolutely. Wow. Um, so like over like 20,000 or what was the guest? I, I, I but, might even I, say a hundred. I might even say a hundred thousand people. It was wow. absolutely insane. The amount of people, um, you know. So, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they didn't expect that. I mean, or maybe they did. Maybe they're just going to identify everyone. Who knows? Um, well, still, they could do that easily enough. They guess. already have identified everybody, right? You know, anybody that's, you know, caring about what's going on is speaking out in one way or another in life, in, you know, on this thing, at work, whatever. You know, they have their opinions and they're speaking them. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the muck of the left right election that's about to come up and oh occupy gosh, yes. everybody. I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know, man, <laughs> it's, it's, we're definitely in hell. If, if, you know, when, when you are about to realize how stupid this is going to be, because if there, if there is a hell, it's definitely all of these like Bloomberg running, you know what I mean? Like you gotta be shit. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, this guy's, I, I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to, you know, the research is out there. Everybody can do and see who he is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, these are the people they sell us, you know. And, and again, even the Trumps by now, you know, four years in, these Trump people can't see that everything that's going on, if the same exact thing happened in the same exact way, but Clinton was president, people would be losing their shit. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But they sold them this psychological fake ass hero that is doing everything the bankers want um everything the 5g silicon valley people want um supporting red flag laws i mean you 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 name it you know what i mean and and people think it's 5g Mm -hmm. yeah and tom i'm gonna give you a hard time because you said silicone so like is he getting breast augmentation yeah, well, whatever. Maybe it's <laughs> no, I'm joking. Silicon, you're giving you a hard time. Silicon. I know. I know. It's giving you a hard time. I know. That was a stretch. I know. <laughs> well, in a way, it's Silicon Valley. <laughs> in a way, everybody walking around, you know, all done up. Not just their breasts, their faces, their yeah. you know, everything. <laughs> yeah. All the fake pretty people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, robots. Yeah. So maybe it, was no, a, you... maybe it was a Freudian slip in that way. <laughs> but I did, no, I did okay. not no, have breasts right. on the mind. <laughs> I didn't have breasts on the mind. <laughs> It's okay if you did. I'm just. <laughs> I do now, but I didn't then. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's that's my mind. It's yeah, in no. the gutter, you know. It was a welcome thought. I appreciate it. <laughs> it made me made me see it. Got in a better mood. <laughs> <laughs> Good, but yeah, no, 100 percent about what you said about you know it's it's you know like I. <sighs> You know, even the per- even people I like really look up to, like I don't view them as like my only, you know, as like like my savior. You know what right. I mean? Exactly. I mean, you know, like I really like Chris Jericho, but that doesn't mean like he's my savior. You know what I mean? Like he's gonna like save me from 
fucking everything in my life or whatever, well, you know? Right. And things like that. We <laughs> or whatever, all, you know. Like, see, that's another thing with the truth movement. They think if you have any kind of, uh, you know, uh, interest in some kind of entertainment that, you know, you're, you're giving into the, like, we all need to turn our brains off from, mm-hmm. especially what those that are truly awake and get it. And because you go fucking crazy if you're just constantly doing this, doing that truth. and read, like You have to just take the downtime and whatever that is. I like my favorite show on TV that I only watch, the only TV show that I watch, and it's stupid, yeah. and it's Survivor. I absolutely love the oh, show. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, is it still going on? Is there a season right now? It's coming up in a couple of weeks, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> good, good, good. good. Um, and, Wait, what's the location for Survivor this year? Well, I'm, I'm not sure where, but what they're doing is it's kind of, they're bringing back all past winners, so it's going to be kind of some of the old school players because as the season has progressed, especially this last season. Like what contestants? Yeah, winners though, people that have won. So it's all going to be winners against winners, you know. Um, But the past season or two or whatever, a few, they brought in some uh, propaganda, you know, mentioned the Me Too movements and the, you know, they've kind of brought it into there and I'm screaming at the stupid TV, you know what I mean? (laughs) How so? Like you're kind of cutting out, like what kind of propaganda were they doing? Like My internet connection is unstable. I see, you know, Uh, they'll they'll, um, kind of cater to talk about and and include movements like the Me Too movement or, um, you know, uh, bring up just in reality this past season, without getting too deep, it was there was four or five examples of, of kind of scaring people into having human interaction. Like um, women weren't wanting to be hugged by this one guy and they made this whole big deal out of it. And then all of a sudden before the show was over, they told us up, he had an inappropriate thing with the producer and he's been removed from the show. Like, like, and then another woman was just so, you know, um, self-confidence or was so low that, she was just talking about, uh, you know, um, her life and all, like it, it, it's not it used to be about the game and the psychological mm-hmm. manipulation of outwitting each other and getting to the end. And, you know, and yeah. they didn't really concentrate much on that. But the reason I bring that woman up is because she is the one that brought up the Me Too movement. Like she was actually naming some of these movements that they never did that shit before, you know, um, and, I, and, and I can't stand any of it, you know, and to each his own. Believe what you want. Those things are big fucking divide and rule crazy you know um oh, yeah. thing. sorry for anybody that that, that 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 thinks it's you know you can have you believe you don't need to hate everybody else you know what i mean like you know but but, but, but dom don't you know that every guy is a lech yeah well every that's guy, every guy is a lech and every woman is a is a helpless victim you know yeah that. and i guess that's what Come i'm da- dancing around man you're right you know what i mean i guess that's what i'm dancing around that whole mentality of uh oh, so stupid man bashing you know what i mean because that's really Really, the way it went, you know, and and they they want you to think as the future goes on, especially these younger kids. They want you to think about, you know, they don't want you to just have human behavior. I mean, like, you know, hug and touch and whatever comes with human interactions between friends that's consensual. And they want everybody to be like, oh, you know, uh, keeping to themselves. And it, it's like putting these phones in front of people, taking away human interaction, you know. Yeah. And, and and to get even more basic, less touchy, less sex, less babies, depopulation. Yes. There yes. you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The Japanese intimacy crisis, you know, yep. prime example, yep. you know, it's what it leads to. And that's, you know, it's took complete social engineering. So I, while yeah. I'm watching that with my kids and family, make sure they know that that is complete social engineering. And uh, it, it is voiced Good. It is voiced quite loudly and abruptly when it happens. So what I'm saying is I'm really hoping this season doesn't fucking have that shit because it's got all old school players and everybody. Shut the fuck up, play the game, <laughs> fuck each other over, and get to the end. And let's see who, how psychologically everyone does it. Because if you really want to study people and behavior, it's a show to really apply it to the work world, apply it to anywhere. You know, it's mm. psychological manipulation of people to get your way. That's what the show is, you know. Okay. And, and they put cool little games in there, you know, to win immunity. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always, you know, I, I, it's working with kids and therapists and psychiatrists and psychologists. I've, I've always been into trying to understand, you know, the way people yeah. think, because I've always tried to want to understand the way I think. So um, it's part of, you know, knowing yourself. So if you don't understand how you work, how are you supposed to help other people understand how 
they need to understand how they work. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, exactly. So, although, yes, it's a show about ego and money and all the satanic <laughs> symbolism. I fucking get it. I see it all and I get it all. I yeah. still watch it because that's the planet you fucking live on, people. Don't deny it. You need to try to do better and change it. But you need to know where you live. You know what I mean? So you, oh, can, yeah. you can watch the show and you can be entertained by it because people are, uh, you know, very... Um, egoic <laughs> yeah and, and and the same like the same is like true with like wrestling and stuff i mean hell there's like so many like you know subversive symbolism in there i could just you know mm-hmm. oh yeah i mean <laughs> i could go on <laughs> i mean i could show you examples but yeah full of propaganda and the storyline and yeah. all of it but y- yeah. y- you need mindless entertainment at some point or mm-hmm. some form of relaxation where you're not you know otherwise you you get into this very angry phase and you know, it can seem hopeless and, and all because there's a lot going on. <laughs> and you, to, 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 my way is always laughter to me. You have to laugh at this shit. You know, what was it? Um, I think was it John Lennon that said that the two things government fear the most are um, uh, nonviolence and, la- and and humor. Is, is that a John Lennon quote? I, I think it uh, is. maybe I, I mean, someone fucking said it. Uh, <laughs> and it's so true. Nonviolence and humor. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't know what to do with that. You know, um, they know what to do with division and violence and anger and all that shit, but they don't know what to do with those other two. It's why comedians get so censored, you know, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, like, it's uh, like I listen to a podcast, like talk is well, talk is Jericho, you know, mm-hmm. Chris Jericho's podcast. And they and, you know, whenever he has the comics on, they do talk about, you know, how uh, how censored, you know, things have become, you know, they have to take extra precautions about like what they what they you know do and stuff <laughs> yeah how ridiculous. sick that makes me to my stomach like we used to live in a world where you say what you want people want to listen listen they don't want to listen turn it the fuck off you know that's called freedom um what the fuck is going on and, and and what have you parents done to the generations of kids out there you've failed miserably i'm sorry and i could say mm-hmm. that knowing i haven't failed miserably i've done my best and do my best because that's what parents are supposed to fucking do you know, um, and I've spent, you know, the years I spent working with these kids, I the stories I've learned about, you know, what a lot of these kids really go through um, and how it affects them as they grow. You know, you, you really realize how important parenting is and, mm-hmm. you know, whether the relationship works or not or whatever it is, you still have responsibilities to be good parents that, that this kid didn't ask for for, you know your situation the kid just was hey i'm born what's up you know um <laughs> yeah, teach me exactly. fuckers teach me motherfucker you know what i mean i'm, I'm dribbling all over myself here i'm shitting my pants i'm pissing my pants i need some fucking knowledge you know uh and parents are just like yeah hey, anymore here's a phone one year old you know ah, like i just want to scream you know uh Time you, time you owe you owe the collective at least ten credits for that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wish my buzzer worked because I would have been buzzing that you have been fined one uh, yeah, credit for that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I got to figure out how to hook it up through here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I don't know how to. Don't worry about it. I'll never figure yeah, it out. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's good that we don't have like air horns or like the annoying sound effects that you know if we could do that over here. <laughs> See, I as a Howard Stern person growing up, I always loved Fred and when. He would time his sound effects on certain parts of the, uh, you know, where they broke down the news or whatever. Doing an interview. Did you ever listen to Howard growing up? Actually, no. No. <laughs> No. Yeah, I mean, so, internet connection is unstable. They don't like, like us talking about Howard Stern. <laughs> no, they don't, because you know oh he was gosh. someone who represented freedom and free voice and rebellion, and they turned him into a, a trained monkey. Um, and the fact that anybody still listens to him, who used to listen to him back then, I, I don't understand how, how those people still listen. <laughs> Habit? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's well, that's exactly. Look, that's why I listened as long as I did, and I, and into years where I'd be yelling at the radio, like, "What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about?" And my buddies were like, "Why the fuck do you still listen to that guy?" And one day I did realize it, it was habit, and I'm like, "I can't fucking listen to this no more. I gotta, I gotta turn this shit off," you know. And the fact that he he blocked me on Twitter out of nowhere, so I, I, I guess I was pissing and moaning about the show, and uh, he didn't like it, but. You know, but he, he went through a stage where all of a sudden everything uh. changed. Where it was a, especially when they went to satellite radio at first, it was very open and very free talk. And you know, of course, it was smutty and you know and stuff. But there was a lot of yeah. a lot of intellectual conversations that actually went on, and a lot of humor, a lot of ball busting, and it was good. It was an open, free show. And then 
this new manager took over and Howard read this stupid book and he started having them all come in in their suits and Artie ended up not being there after he had a personal issue. And the whole show just turned into a, Howard became this America's Got Talent guy and he started interviewing all these Hollywood people and his ego got stroked and that was it, man. He's been on, I mean, he's even had Hillary Clinton on the fucking show recently in the past <laughs> year or two. Yeah, like, I'm, he used to have Trump always on the show and not that I give a shit about either one of them, but how do you go from such a swing and, and really he just realized he was fake, you know what I mean? And that's another part of awakening that you had to realize he was a plant. He was either activated or just being used as a useful dupe. But either way, the whole show was fake, you know. Um, and, and so those are some of the yeah. things that, you know, you wake up to. But I don't wish I didn't listen because I, I, you know, learned a lot about laughing at yourself, which most people can't do, you know. Yeah, it, the that's so important. The, you have to have uh, the ability to ball bust yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to, have a, to have a good sense of humor with yourself. I mean, like, I crack myself up. You know I do, saying? too. I, I crack myself <laughs> up all the time. If you can't laugh at yourself, I mean, first of all, if you can laugh at yourself, you kind of own the world because that's how they get you. When self-confidence and worrying about what people think and say and it's just funny and how I look. And, like, when you really don't give a shit and you just – it's – that people don't know what to do with that you know they they really don't that's where they either love you or they hate you but once you do it you're kind of free you know yeah i agree with that that's it used to be i've gotten a lot better over the past few years about like not being as bad as the people pleaser i've been getting a lot better with that thankfully yeah i think it's part of the whole awakening process you know i think everything that we're going through is you know it um, is. and as much as we know <laughs> There's so much that we don't fucking know. There's so much, you know, many more things that we may come to the understanding of during this whole mess, you know, so. Yeah. And Tom, that, that brings me up to a question, like um, with uh, with what Max Egan said during his latest uh, video, mm -hmm. he's talking about like, you know, researching, like, you know, like people who keep on researching and researching, but they don't go within. Mm -hmm. Could you have a balance of that? Because I still want to keep on learning. I know yeah. I'm, I don't think he's saying like be anti-learning, like don't learn stuff. But I don't know like how to like balance. You know what I mean? No, like the I, balance. I, I you agree. Know what I, mean? I do, and no, I think you do. You know, look, that's what we're here for is to gain knowledge, and there's so much more to know and always to know. Um, but you know, I think kind of what he was also. Meaning was, was like going down, like, I don't know, a, a certain path and then staying on that path and researching and researching. And, but he, that was also the video that he made that he was kind of starting to get back to himself. The next one, he really kind of realized, you know, what had happened. Did you, did you watch them both, the two? Yeah, I watched them both. I forgot which one did. Yeah, yeah. I think that was from the, f the first one I sent you. Um, oh, okay. Um, but no, I agreed listening to that. I thought to myself, well, look, read. I'm not entertained by things anymore. I research because that's what I want to do. I want to learn more and more and more and come to more understanding and more understanding. Um, mm -hmm. But not, like you said, in a bad way. I think there's a balance that, you know, that's what the entertainment part is, the mindless stuff that we watch. <laughs> here yeah, and yeah, there, yeah. The wrestling, the survivor, the, you know, the football games that I'll watch. Um, but I would say that if I didn't watch them with my son, I wouldn't watch them because... I only watch them because we enjoy it together. I yeah. haven't really watched football in years since it became fake and fixed and, you know, kind of the same as wrestling. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's it's predetermined. Wrestling, anyway. wrestling is, more entertain, is more entertaining. It is. And I feel as football has turned into the same thing. You know, I feel like it's a show now and the winners and losers are pre-done right down to the score for gambling. And it's all done with replay and refs and any dumb player that says yeah i'll take a hundred grand to drop a pass i mean it's so easy and i'm believe me everyone that i know who watched football growing up when i was young feels the same way so i'm not really i know i'm not alone on that in the world but i try not to ruin that for my son for the game so i do explain that level of the gameplay and then explain morals to him and you know what kind of people have you know lost their morals uh, to compromise their morals to to just become a football player and you know explain you know, like you can you can learn things by watching these damn things, you know, is what I'm saying. Not everything is the devil, like uh you know, what was <laughs> wrestling, that? oh the, my the, gosh. Like the water the water boy. She's the devil. Did you see the water boy with Adam Sandler? Oh, do I have it? I want to. <laughs> you can tell no, her. No, 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 no. I watched I a have. lot of movies. No, I, think, the old movies. I think I have, but it's been a long time. I think I watched a bit of it. <laughs> it's a funny movie. I, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a stupid funny movie. Like I, I like stupid movies. You know, I just like. Yeah, Sam has awesome movies. Yeah, just things where you can turn your brain off and just laugh at the stupidity of people and the way we interact and the way we think and you know. And then of course you can pick out the poison pills when you're smart enough. So mm-hmm. people that think, oh God, he's watching movies. He's a shill. He's a yeah. He just wants us to be mindless and only entertained by the satanic oh, of Hollywood. No, yeah. no Tom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How you lost your way. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's growing up, you know, a heavy metal guy that some of the music I listened to would have been actually oh, considered my... probably satanic, you know, but oh my gosh, I, you Tom. can hear the the point of the song and get it and that it's teaching you a different lesson, like the negative of that lesson. Like, you know, music, again, it's all interpretive and, you know, people judge it, you know. Yeah. Well, one example is like, you know, like in college, I, I listened to a lot of Evanescence. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, they don't have like light lyrics, you know, like some of the, some of the lyrics they talk about like self-harm and like suicide and stuff like that. It's like, mm-hmm. but you know, like I was like going through a lot. It's like, okay, you know, the, it, felt, it made me feel good. Like listening to that music. It, exactly. But exactly. It's like, it's like, it made us, you know, just. You can yeah. internalize it in a positive way for yourself. I, I'm the same way with music, you know, anytime growing up or whatever. Music was my go-to when I was having struggles. I just put it on and, and you kind of felt like you weren't alone in things, you know, like these feelings you have. Okay. Someone wrote about these feelings that I'm having, so I'm not mm-hmm. alone here. So, we, you know, this, mm-hmm. you can get through this stuff, you know, mm-hmm. um, of course, music now is all about, you know, drugs, ass, motherfucker, shit, fuck, fuck, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and I know because it comes out of my children's bedrooms and I'm like, Oh, what? I laugh. My best friend, you know, who passed away. I'm like, you are busting my balls having my kids play this shit. Cause you know, rap, I, I, I never liked rap and he knows the heavy metal people. Although, some of it did mix back in the 80s and early 90s, public enemy and stuff. There was some good stuff. Um, but I, I'm not a fan of just talking for singing and a push of a button on a computer. I like instruments, talent, singing, vocals. You know what I mean? M- yeah, that, yeah. Music, you know, it's called music. Yeah. Um, so when I hear what's coming out of their rooms, I'm like, oh, the amount of laughter going on, <laughs> you know, on the <laughs> other side of the realm. Well, uh, well you know, Tom, actually, there, there's sort of a, there's a band called Stuck Mojo that you might like. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of rap slash rock, yeah. but it's, uh, it's kind of a, this side, and that's, it's like one of the bands of the, one of the guitar, like guitar players of Fozzy, like Chris Jericho's okay. band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you might like that. Yeah, I, I, and that's the thing. Anything that's talented, I would like. Yeah, so. they're talented. They, yeah, they've been around since the 90s. I yeah. Think. Even though their last album was in 2016, but still. Well, you know, it seems that that's all, all, all the music really has kind of come out of the 80s and 90s that, are, you know, that I think... Personally, I know it's because, oh, you could say that's when you grow up. But, uh, you know, I like the older stuff, 60s, 70s. I like all different kinds of music. I like 50s music. I like some rap. That, that, But once it just got into this just singing about gangsta nothing crap and mm-hmm. killing and, you know what I mean, just drugs. And, it, like, I just, I, I, you know, it's there's no purpose for it. Music is supposed to be uplifting. It's supposed to be. You know, it, it does have an effect on the mind and the body music. And uh, when that's what the lyrics are, um, you know, there was a big uproar against heavy metal and even early rap because they were singing about important social issues, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. government, you know, uh, mm-hmm. um, conditions in, in, in cities, you know, when it comes to certain rap artists or whatever it may be. And, yeah. and it was targeted as satanic music and evil and, you know, having to label it. Um, and then they just turned it into lyrics that don't mean anything except for you know drugs and abuse and violence and you know but i believe music back then had a message you know um and mm-hmm. it, it's still there right, you know right. it's, it's still right. there to be heard you know I, I try to play it as much as possible around my kids <laughs> it's just i gotta get it in there subconsciously i gotta do something you know, they, they all grew up with it young, but, you know, you're going to get into whatever your people around you are into with music. That's kind of how it, you know, sort of works. And whatever's on the radio, play 10,000 times and you're going to get into oh. it, you know. Uh, um, yeah, I thankfully, like, when I do Lyft, people don't, like, request, I listen to you. I don't have music on because mm-hmm. I just don't. No. Some some of the drivers they they go gung ho on like playlists and shit like that. It's like I don't do that. <laughs> no, no. I give them water. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I agree. You know, because I just uh, that's all you get is water. 
No, uh, and, and that's enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> really? Not sure. Um, you just cut <laughs> like out again. Local, like it, like hit radio stations. Like no, huh? You just can you cut hear me out. Now? Yeah, I can hear you. You cut out though. <laughs> Attacked again. You there? No, can't hear you. Hello. Wow. Still don't hear you, Lisa. Lisa, hello. <laughs> there you are, Lisa. I got you. Now I hear you. Now I hear you. Now I don't hear you. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Now I hear you. Now I don't. <laughs> I can cough then because I can't hear you. Hopefully you can't hear me coughing. Hello. I wonder if Lisa got disconnected. Hmm. Send me some kind of Morse code over the computer if you can hear me. <laughs> or you could just text me. That's a good idea. <laughs> She's texting me. <laughs> it's trying to reconnect. Okay. Lisa is trying to reconnect. Uh, man, I'll tell you. Hey, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just, it just got me. It like got me out of like it got me out of Zoom completely. And then it, and then it <laughs> I, I, I think you could make a sitcom about what it's like to try to, to tell the truth and do an internet show nowadays because this is just hilariously crazy. You know. You know, since since I'm triggering them, I might as well read the section from that in his image, and then I'll just trigger them completely. Yeah, is that it's the a, book you got? Is that what you went yeah, and got? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a long section if you don't mind reading. No, my absolutely, well worth it. Okay. Uh, it's it's the paperback version, and it's uh, page 113, and the heading is called Theological Semtex, S-E-M-T-E-T-E-X, and I don't know what that is offhand, but that's okay. <laughs> okay can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Tom? Yeah, there you are. There you are. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, no, I could hear you. I had muted okay. myself when you were going to oh, read, so okay. that I didn't cough or anything over your reading, so. I, I, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, no, okay, you're good. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Gnostics regarded the incarnation as a priestly fraud foisted on humanity, but not just that. They also considered the the quote the quote son of God end quote to be a delusional idea insinuated into the human mind by a species of aberrant of a of aberrant non-human entities or mental parasites, the archons. These bizarre intra 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 Psychic fan phantoms are minions of the demiurge, the false creator god, a concept that appears to be unique to Gnostic thought. In their identification of the demiurge was Jehovah, the father guy of Jewish and Christian tradition. Gnostics drew a frontal attack from those who founded their religion on a cherished belief in the male supreme being. Often the attack was violent and sometimes murderous, as in the death of Hypatia. Modern scholars cannot ignore the fact that Gnostics consider the supreme being of Judeo-Christian religion to be a demented imposter, but they make as little as possible of this outrageous claim. In many scholarly works, the nature and activity of the archons is simply passed over in silence. The two best-known texts on Gnosticism, Hans Jonas's The Gnostic Religion and Elaine Pagel's The Gnostic God. Lisa, Lisa. I, do not include there you go. And then translated equivalent strongly. Oh no, you cut out again. Lisa. Figures strongly in, in the Sophiastics clearly associated the archons. You can't hear me? No, I can now. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Gnostics clearly associated the archons with what they perceived to be the religious dimension of Judeo Christianity. But this notion of an alien implant is so bizarre that. Oh, my God. Scholars are loath to consider it. Dismissing the archontic material at the NHC was, um, it, it, it gets the experts off the hook uh, because it disobliges them from giving full and fair treatment to the Gnostic critique of salvationist religions. The religion. In short, it saves them from a, the risk of theological incorrectness. Uh, deception and counterfeiting are signatures of the archons. And this is the thing I wanted to stress. Um, their delight is in deception. Um, and the Greek word they use is apaton, A-P-A-T-O-N. And their counterfeit, 
And the Greek word for this is A-N-T-I-M-I-M-O-N, spirit. Apocryphon of John, uh, one, uh, book two, uh, two in Roman numerals, and then one, uh, 21. The Greek apoton denotes willful intent to deceive, and anti-mimon uh, denotes the method of our contact deception, literally counter-mimicry. This means to copy something, but make the copy, the fake version, serve a purpose counter to, counter to the original thing or idea. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Tom? Yep, okay. I can hear you. Okay. Yep. okay. And the reason I bring this up is the whole idea of the counter mimicry, the copy, the fake version, is like when we're talking when we're talking about AI, about how they're trying to make the synthetic biology, the the, the smart world, the fake synthetic world. You know, they're making synthetic trees, making synthetic, you know, like everything, you know, like synthetic humans, artificial humans, artificial intelligence, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's why, you know, that's it's the whole it's the archontic vision made they're trying to make this alive with AI, you know, it's, that's, you know, the whole counter mimicry they, to serve a purpose counter to the original thing or idea, you know, they want to just be against like natural things in general. Mm-hmm. They don't want natural humans. They want fake humans. They want fake biology. They want fake intelligence, you know, and I keep on going, but mm-hmm. cause this, this, this thing is just, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because again, yeah, people ahead. with David Icke, you know, they, they, he has gone into this in past uh, presentations and has mm. been saying these kind of things. I know people have issues with the Gnostics for whatever their religious reasons, but if you really listen to what you're saying and look around the world and understand the virtual reality world and really understand what this, you know, counter mimicry means, it makes mm-hmm. complete sense that that's what they're doing, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, and I, a, I have more, but it, yeah, go ahead. It's a great book. No, keep going. Great. Okay. Book. Okay. If you want, I mean, if you no, want no, to, no, I do. I do. Oh, okay. I do. Right. I, I, I wanted wanna, to share this for, like, for weeks with you, you guys. Okay. No, no, okay. I wanted to share this with weeks for you guys. It's like, oh, it was, do it. I was Absolutely. like, I was bursting, busting out this evening to do this last week. Oh, so, you should have just told us, hey, okay. <laughs> go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. In their view of human self-deception, a highly sophisticated view compare, comparable to the noetic uh, N-O-E-T-I-C psychology of our time, Gnostics regarded the divine redeemer as a counter mimic of their revealer. Pagan adepts from the mysteries in the Levant and Egypt saw in the Salvationist program of redemption both the evidence and the instrument of archontic deviation. They did not blame the archons for originating the program, however, but for colluding with those human beings who who did. Um, Yalda, Yalda Baoth, um, Y-A-L-D-A-B-A-O-T-H, himself chose a certain man called Abraham and made a covenant with him that if his seed would continue to serve him, he would give to him the earth as, as an inheritance. Later through Moses, he brought forth from Egypt the descendants of Abraham, gave them the law, and made them Jews. From them, the seven gods, also, also called the Hebdomad, <laughs> H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D, chose their own heralds to glorify each and proclaim Yaldabaoth <laughs> as God. So that the rest of mankind, hearing the glorification, might also serve those who were proclaimed by the prophets as gods. Um, against heresies, uh, one thirty ten. I mean, like it's one one period thirty period ten. So I don't know how that reads. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, here is the, def- the here's the definitive moment in the sacred history of the ancient Hebrews, viewed with a ra- rather unusual spin. Gnostics assigned the traditional narrative, but assigned a completely different value to what transpires between Abraham and the entity he takes for God the Father. Yalda Baoth, um, Yalda Baoth, okay, Yalda Baoth is how you're supposed to pronounce it. <laughs> um, a made up word possibly derived from Aramaic, um, quote, who transverses the external space, end quote. Um, is the secret name for the false creator God or Demiurge. His realm is the planetary system exclusive of the earth, the hebdomad of seven planets. In the cosmology of the Sophia mythos, Yaldabaoth ya- ba- <laughs> and his <laughs> minions arise as a lifeless distorted mirroring of the divine, as a lifeless distorted mirroring of the divine patterns or celestial archetypes. 
here you go again. The lifeless, the artificial biology, synthetic biology, distorted mirroring of the divine patterns or celestial archetypes in the pleroma or the Godhead, uh, P-L-E-R-O-M-A. They are called archons from Greek archaia, uh, A-R-C-H-A-I-A, primal first from the beginning because the formation of their world, the planetary system subject to <coughs> inorganic and mechanical laws precedes the formation of the living earth. Uh, the Sophia mythos and the ro role of the archons are both fully elaborated below beginning in chapter 10. Um, okay. Anyways, any questions so far? <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I haven't read this book in a long time, so oh, it's okay. nice to, and like I said, I read it from David Icke books and his presentations. Like it's nice to, hear it all again because it's been a while you know okay cool i'll just keep on reading <laughs> if you want i mean no yeah, i do i do I, I, i'm still not done with this section i'm almost done I, I, there's like I, I, three I more pages <laughs> you know because most people really haven't you know even heard of the book let alone read it so it was, I, I, I think it's important you know and, and don't let and don't let the like big words like you know drag you down i mean it's it, it, that's you know like keep on reading it and like just look up stuff it's okay yeah the concept will come you know mm -hmm. it's because i yeah. hate that stuff too all this crazy I, spelled words you're like what the fuck i always <laughs> look up stuff i mean like yeah uh, okay exactly <laughs> uh, okay in the gnostic pers perspective the archons are not only mind parasites delusional nodes in the human mind considered as quasi-autonomous psychic entities if you will they are cosmic imposters parasites who pose as gods they lack the primary divine factor of E N N O I A. Uh, and Enoya? Uh, I'm guessing. <laughs> it's Greek. Uh, intention, <laughs> intention, intentionality, creative will. They cannot originate anything. They can only imitate. And they must effectuate their copycat activity with subterfuge and stealth, lest its true nature be detected. Spot on. Mic drop. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Spot on. <laughs> Mic <know>? drop. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, and this is like they, they try to like, you know, like, you know, doll up like, you know. A uh oh, you just dropped again. If you can hear me. AI and everything like, oh, it's going to save, it's going to save lives, healthcare, like, you know, like, uh, is, you know, everyone will be safe in their smart cities. Everyone will like behave more. Oh, internet connection is, is unstable. Yeah, you're back though. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Like it's, it's just going to save the world, you know, like all this artificial intelligence shit is going to save the world. It's like, no, it's not. No, I know. It's, and it's it, it, such common sense that it's not too. That's why I call it stupid so, so often because it's so, such common sense that this is, uh, it's not common. That's why even though it's, com it's not I common. Know. It's fucking uncommon. So uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, it should be common sense to people with common sense, but there's not enough people with it anymore. You know, exactly. But of course, I'm reading from a book, and you know, from a physical copy of a book. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> heaven for offend. You read a physical copy of a book. Yeah. Don't you know that that's <laughs> that's fake news? <laughs> oh my gosh. Books are fake news. Come on now. Oh my no. gosh, I, not, not enough stone cold salutes for that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep on going. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. okay, so they, the archons, cannot originate anything. They can only imitate, and they must effectuate their copycat activity with subterfuge and stealth, lest its true nature be detected. Hence, they offer Abraham something that already that already belongs to him as a member of the human race. The earth has already been given to humanity. It is the precious habitat the goddess Sophia dreamed for the Anthropos. A-N-T-H-R-O-P-O-S. Uh, it basically... I think it sort of means like, like true, like the, the true human mm -hmm. from what I've been reading in general, mm -hmm. um, the true human, um, and which she made, and which she manifested by the metamorphosis of her own powers. The archons approach Abraham with a fake deal. Also known as fake news. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> promising, <laughs> promising him possession and domination of the terrestrial realm. But this is not compatible with Sophia's E-N-N-O-I-A her divine intention. The earth is not a territorial prize, but a precious setting where the human species can realize its innate genius, its capacity for novelty, acting within the natural boundaries set by the goddess. <coughs> natural law. Absolutely. The archons, 
The archives mimic the divine Enoya, Sophia's intention, at the sa- and at the same time, they invert it. Satanic in- inversion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> in place of the participation in the divine miracle of, sim- of symbiosis, uh, symbiosis and evolutionary emergence, which is the true birthright of humanity, they promise Abraham a fake sovereignty that works against that birthright and deviates human purpose from its po- proper course of unfoldment. This is counter mimicry in action. Anti, anti Nimon is an, a n t i m o m a n t i m i m o n <laughs> is a powerful tool of dispossession. Needless to say. Uh, and that's the counter mimicry. The Apocryphon of John says that the Demiurge removed himself from Sophia and moved away from the place where he arose. Uh, 10.20. Um, in other words, the Archons do not respect their proper boundaries in the cosmic order. Um, they do not belong to the terrorist, to the terrestrial biosphere, but to the planetary system beyond the Earth. But they are invasive and they encourage invasion. <sighs> Still more to go, Tom. You good? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so spot on that, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I don't know how people don't want to know more about this, you know? I, I've been, yeah, when I read this, like, oh my gosh, I have to share this. Yeah. <laughs> like, this and, is exactly yeah. like, yes, this is the counter, this is like the inversion, the counter mimicry, the fakeness is like this right here. <laughs> it is. And there's people that reject this with all kinds of excuses. And yet, you know, just listen to the words, listen to what's being said and look around. You know, <laughs> and think yeah. about what, what you know. Everything that that ties into this, it's it's a it's it's a very telling book. And you know, like you said, did you read this on your podcast before? Uh no, I haven't. Gotcha, because this is a good one. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the Lord God of the Old Testament called Abraham from the place where he was born, Ur of the Chaldees. Uh, also, known as, also known as the Chaldeans, um, believing himself, even though that's not part of the book, I added that the Chaldeans, um, <laughs> believing himself to be acting in the cause of a divine mission, Abraham was dispossessed. He became the leader of a people compelled to dispossess others in an, in an escalating cycle of territorial loss and gain. In a larger sense, all of humanity is dispossessed of its genuine potential by the subterfuge of the archons, that is, by taking supremacy as a means of transcendence. The dispossession motif is largely, is, uh, sorry, is closely associated with the deific uh, pretension of the archons. Uh, and the Lord Archon said to the authorities who attend according to the image of God and according to our likeness. Um, Oh, jeez. Uh, Roman numerals two, and then one, and then a comma, and then 15, and then a, co- a period, and then a five. <laughs> <laughs> Here again is a familiar factor of biblical, of biblical narrative told with a Gnostic twist. The archons are themselves deluded in believing they can create humans in their likeness. Kind of reminds us of the Anunnaki, hey? Yeah, that's exactly what it, oh, 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 I was muted. Yeah, that's exactly what it reminds, you know, from the Sumerian text. These are, these come from the Nagamarti text, right? These, these writings. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, yeah, because you said like NHC, like Nod Hamadi. Nod Hamadi. Yeah, the, NHC, so, and Nod Hamadi, like C, so. Because there was two. It was the Dead, Dead Sea Scrolls were more of the New Testament stuff, and then these were more of the Old Testament stuff, because it's all biblical as well, you know, all of it. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a shame how people stick to one understanding of a concept when you can really get the bigger picture by reading, you know, outside of the belief system, you know, about the same topic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's mind boggling. <laughs> it, it is, Lisa. It really is. You know, and sad. You know. Yeah, and and another thing that I was thinking of when they uh, that the line. Um, uh, of a people compelled to dispossess others in an escalating cycle of territorial loss and gain. Mm-hmm. All the world, all the wars that have been fought mm-hmm. since then. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and, and, and they're, they're endless. You know, endless, endless uh-huh. wars been fought since. It's the entirety of their whole system. You know, and mm-hmm. it, it's crazy that people still can't see this, even in the modern day with true documents and research. But you can take it all the way back to. 
to you know unedited texts that have been found and you know <laughs> that are thousands of years old and read the same damn thing. It's mm-hmm. crazy, you know. It really is that, it, that that humans really are fighting growing up this badly, like a little kid, you know, doesn't mm-hmm. grow up, you know, because mm-hmm. that's really what it is, you know, to me anyway. No, you're right. I hear you. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. <laughs> I purposely, I purposely like you know having a little. Yeah, you did. That's it's right. Fine. I did interrupt it you. Helps you're right. break it up. That's right. Break stopped. it up. It's cool. It's <laughs> Good cool. point. No worries. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so the, okay, the archons are themselves deluded in believing they can create humans in their likeness. And he put that in, in all in italics. Um, they do not succeed. The Gnostic materials are explicit on this point, but they insinuate into human minds the belief they have succeeded. The, the Abrahamic religions all claim that humanity is special, the one species made in his image. This belief is associated with the second component of the Redeemer complex. There is a select few who faithfully reflect the image of their maker, while the rest of humanity does not. This nefarious and separatistic belief not only sets apart the righteous few and targets them for discrimination, it condemns the rest of humanity who do not mirror the divine image and follow the Father's plan. The Messiah comes to correct the situation, saving the select few f- from persecution, Jewish version, or offering divine absolution to all repentant sinners, Christian version. But the master plan is still not fulfilled on earth, and final retribution must be imposed. Teachers in the in the mysteries rejected this entire scenario as dementia, the psychotic ploy of the archontic mind parasites. <laughs> what a paragraph, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Go ahead. Did you uh, want to? No, go ahead. I didn't. I thought you were. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I, no, that's cool. I just, you know, if you had something to say, I don't want to. No, that's all right. I didn't want. I, I didn't want to jump in. I didn't know if you were stopping or if you were. So you go ahead. Okay. 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 I, next time I'll say like any thoughts, Tom. How about that? Gotcha. There you go. Okay. Good thinking. See, we're we're getting good at this. Hey, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unlike the divine art eons, uh, A E O N S. Um, and for people who like video games, the Aeons are also in Final Fantasy Nine, uh, Final Fantasy Ten. I'm sorry, Final Fantasy Nine is not, yeah, uh, Final Fantasy Ten. So, so even though, and that and that video game talks about religion as well, and how religion and how like organized religion is fake. So there you go. <laughs> oh, does it? I never. Played yeah, it, it does. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. It yeah. sounds interesting though. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's people that people that play like video games. And they have like, like let's plays of it, you know, like let us play, you mm-hmm. know. So mm-hmm. you can like find that. Okay, okay. If you want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I, can watch people play video games. It's so nerdy. I love it. I know my my son does it sometimes, so I do know. <laughs> he watches certain people. So, um, but that's a game I've always heard about and never actually played. Never bought it. Never played it. Uh, interesting that that would come up, you know, in this. You know what I mean. Like in this example, I mean that you're bringing up it's this tie. It's interesting. You know? well, that's the reason why I'm a nerd, I suppose. Then I like then I make the connection for everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. Because look, that helps people see things sometimes, though. You know, because they put that shit, like you said, right out there. Yeah, and actually, the like one of the main bad guys in there is actually called Sin, <laughs> like S I N. Makes sense. <laughs> so, anyways, um, okay. So unlike the divine aeons who emanate without imposing themselves, the archons wrongly believe they can impress their mentality upon the human species. They want to make humanity like themselves, but they are constantly foiled by the superiority of the human species, whose origin is in, oh, uh, quote, whose origin is in the imperishable realm where the virginal power dwells, superior to the archons of, cha- of chaos and to their universe. End quote. The reality of the archons Roman numerals two, four um, colon nine nine th- ninety three period twenty five to thirty. The Nag Hammadi writings constantly stress that humanity is superior to the Archons. At quote, Adam was more correct in his thinking than the chief ruler Yalda. Hold on a second, Yalda Biot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roman numeral two one. Uh, one colon twenty two period six, but although humans can outthink the archons, we do not always optimize the inborn intelligence of our species, called nous, N O U S, by the Gnostics. 
when the faculty of discrimination is weak, we are prone to let pretense and fantasy override clear thinking. Failing to own and evolve the intelligence innate to our species, we risk being deviated by another kind of mind, an artificial intelligence, through which we become unreal to ourselves. Mic drop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. And, and in, in many ways, that's talking about the ego, while these people want to take the next step, like you said, and actually bring this into the physical and, you know, assimilate this world and human beings into their world, into their archon world. That's now that sounds yeah. crazy, but that's literally what they want to do, you know? And if people can't see with the understanding of virtual reality video games today, when you put that Oculus wrist mask on and you're in this other fucking world that's all around you and can't see how real that is and how way decades beyond that technology actually exists on the planet, you know, uh, where it can look real as hell and can even be opposite, you know, frequencies to the point where it, it creates the illusion of solidity, just like we have now. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. the same damn thing. And if people can't understand that that's possible, then how the fuck do you put a video game on and don't wonder how it works? Like how this whole world appears around you now, like ready player one and wonder mm-hmm. how it works, how it hijacks the eyesight, the senses, feeds at a different frequency, you know, it, it's all it does, you know, it's, it's, and you can get them for all the senses, the hands, the ears, and you can really be in these worlds, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and, and so when you read something like that and you realize that, you know, maybe a thousand years ago, people would be going, ah, it's witchcraft and all this shit, whatever they would say to, well, we have science, not just science all around us, enter fucking all around us that uses these concepts to entertain you and you mm-hmm. can't connect them together, you know, and see that there's more science to make them more real and more real. And the more we are obsessed by these fucking things that, uh, you know, that's, it's so plausible to create this scientifically that maybe I should consider it instead of, Oh, conspiracy theorists to die. Jesus is coming. You know, now Jesus actually talked about the same stuff, trying to tell us pretty much a lot of the same stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's a great, great book for people to really, and it's like you said, it's not that hard of a read. Some big words that you just read it. And like, I would read stuff like that and just make up my own fucking in my head, knock about out about it, whatever the fuck, just so I could keep reading. Like the name of it wasn't important, but now in rereading things, I do try to, cause since I've read it already, now I try to understand it better, you know? And when you break a lot of those words down, you can see bigger concepts, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but just to let you know, at least I do got to go by nine o'clock. I, I meant to tell you in the beginning. Okay, but... I am almost done. To be no, honest. Okay, no, so I, I, I mean, I'll keep a... no, you no, can... no, I am seriously, I'm almost done. I only have like two paragraphs. So... Oh, okay. okay so I was going to say. Okay, let, me, be... let me let me go through those real quick and then. Yeah, sounds okay. good. Sounds okay, good. Cool. No, Alrighty. Cool. Okay. Um, the triumph of the rulers or authorities, as the archons are also called, would be achieved at the stage of human experience where no one can tell plastic from pearl. An imitation is so prevalent that a genuine human animal feels like an alien on the home planet. At that point, the human species would be so falsified that we would not even be able to distinguish real people from soulless clones. For humankind to betray and abandon itself is merely the amusement of the archons, it seems. They insinuate their influence through religious beliefs, also through scientific beliefs, when science assumes a role in society formerly held by religion, as it largely does today. Because such beliefs have the most potent effect on our sense of humanity and human potential. Although scholars reject it as superstitious nonsense, or Gnostic myth-making too weird to consider, the role of the Archons is essential both to Sophianic cosmology and the pagan critique of salvationism. The ideological virus released on a pandemic scale by St. Paul was incubated among the ancient Hebrews by the Archons. So says Gnostic counter-mythology. Yalda Bayot <laughs> himself chose a certain man named Abraham and made a covenant with him. From the outset, the delusional beliefs of an alien mindset infected the Judeo-Christian religion, but Gnostics saw the infection as it set in. They taught that finding humanity's true path depends on refuting and rejecting these beliefs, all the way back to their origin. If the, if the Zadokite, uh, Z-A-D-D-I-K-I-T-E, uh, basically they were like people who like really believed in the end times, like like really strongly, like 
deep into like the the uh, the eschatology, the end times. Uh, mm-hmm. He talks about it earlier in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, Z a d d i k i t e documents from the Dead Sea are the bedrock of human of Christianity, which now seems impossible to deny that the nagmati material of a genuine Gnostic character is the explosive charge that can blow the institution of the faith off its foundations for good and all. The message of the Gnostic revealers is theological semtex, S-E-M-T-E-X. So that's the whole entire section I wanted to read. (laughs) And it's perfect, really, for people to really try to understand that. I mean, I don't know who would not hear that and want to read more and learn more about and then see the bigger picture. But again, who would not want to, I guess, people with religious beliefs who that's just sacrilegious to because it has to be true whatever's in that Bible that was, you know, (coughs) tweaked and changed and adjusted at the Council of Nicaea, you know what I mean? Um, Mm -hmm. And books thrown away. And then you find these scrolls and these findings and, and they're completely unedited and they apply so much to where we are right now that you can't kind of see, people can't kind of see that, all right, maybe there is more to this. Maybe they... I mean, I'm hoping people do, you know, because it's this kind of stuff. Like I said, I first started hearing about stuff like this from David Icke. I didn't just all of a sudden come across these findings and these texts and these, you know, um, these things out of uh, out of just popping up out of nowhere. I, I took whatever research from a researcher and then I researched that as well, you know, mm-hmm. instead of just and from there, you you, you, you know, find out so much more. And that was so many years ago. And to look and, and remember then how I could see it. And now look around the world and go, oh, my God, this is being built. I got towers right over here. I got this, you know, mm-hmm. uh, massive headache in the back of my head that I know is from something. I got, you know, all this shit everywhere. And if you could see these frequencies, these poison Wi-Fi's and shit in the air, if they were visible, you know, people might realize. But. Out of sight, out of mind, you know, that's just humanity. Oh, it's not my problem. I can't see it. You're crazy. Or even stuff across the world up, you know, uh, it's not happening here. And, you know, until it's right at people's doorsteps, people mm-hmm. don't, don't see it. And by then it's too late. And, you know, I, I think we're here to learn before that all happens, you know, before it's at everyone's doorstep. But yeah. uh, I, I don't know, man. you know, people walking around out there. I know. <laughs> I don't Our know. Our internet connection is unstable. Oh, really? Am I cutting out? <laughs> no, it is on my end. So, but, oh, it was you. Okay. Yeah, but thank you, Tom, for like you know listening and yeah. for your awesome insights too. Because this, you know, this had to be like you know shared, and I wanted to share it so bad. So yeah, this is no. a good time to do it. It was. It was perfect. It was perfect, and I hope that encourages people to download or get the book. You know. Yeah, and the book is uh, John Lamb. L- uh. Lisa, they cut you out. You you dropped. Say it again. Laugh like you know, like an eyelash. Um, not in it. Not in his image. Can you hear me? Say that. Yeah. Say that again. You, you just came back on because you cut not out. Not in his image. By John Lamb. La- John Lamb lash. Yep. Lamb like the you know like a little little lamb. L A M B. That's what it, that's what cut you off. You got halfway through his name in it. John Lamb Lash. There you go. There you go. We have to talk John fast. John Lamb Lash. <laughs> Not in his image. Not in his image. Yeah. John Lamb Lash. There you go. Okay. I, thanks, Tom. And that's a book Jay Parker talks about a lot too. So, oh yeah. You know, yeah. That's um, where he got. He mentions the the telestai, the aimed, and it's in that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so. a great, great read. So thank you, Lisa. So I You're hope I hope Sarah's okay. Um, you know, tell I, I her, think are, so. Are maybe talk to her. I, I think I think she's okay. I think the intense energy is getting to her, so I think she, she's just relaxing or gotcha. whatever, and that's understandable. Tell her I said hi. And, I will. Uh, you know, if you guys need anything, if anything is, just let me know. You know, if okay. anything is up, let me know. So, all right, thank you, Lisa. Uh, you're welcome, Tom. Have Thanks. a good night. Thank you. Take sure. care. Bye-bye. Bye bye.